right? So this is the larynx, it's a supersized one, and we'll give you some components of it. So here we see, this is the hyoid bone. This is the thyroid cartilage, or the Adam's apple. Here's the cricoid cartilage. This is the trachea. Behind it would be the esophagus. These are the tracheal rings. So these are cartilaginous rings. They're shaped like the letter C, and they get, keep the trachea open or patent. There's two other, or three other pieces of cartilage. This piece here, a retinoid. This little horn here, corniculate. And then again, our epiglottis. Now on this model, it doesn't really work as well as the other one. It's supposed to seal the opening, but it's on a spring here, so it kind of hits the other pieces of cartilage. It's not really supposed to do that, right? But this is the interesting part. Right now, when you look in there, okay, there's no open air passageway. Okay? The glottis, the opening, is closed, sealed closed. No air can pass through. But now notice, this is not really how it is in the body. We don't have a string with a piece of metal on it, but look what happens when I pull on that. All right. So, in essence, muscle tissue. We saw a little bit of the muscle tissue here on this model. Muscle tissue can contract and pull on these pieces of cartilage and cause them to swivel. And when they do, those pieces of cartilage, which are attached to ligaments and the mucosa, the mucosal membrane, can cause the glottis to open or close. And not only open or close, but open wide or close, narrow. So by altering the opening, we can now begin to create different types of basic sound. Just like, you know, playing a recorder, right? A recorder, you have little holes, you open the holes, you get one sound, you close the holes, you get another sound. Well, basic sound production begins as we open and close the glottis using the arentinoid and corniculate cartilage attached to muscle tissue, okay? What you see in there, the, the brown suede, represents what we sometimes call the vocal cords, uh, a vocal ligament and a vestibular ligament, two ligaments that run from the cartilage here in the back across the opening to the cartilage in the front. So there are two ligaments that run from front to back. And then what's in suede represents the lining, right? The whole entire passageway from here through and all the way through has a lining. So if we say that this pink colored lining, that's the mucosal lining. The mucosal lining is your epithelial cells with your mucus cells that line the entire tract. Well, as we get down into this region, that mucosa then folds over, the mucosa folds over the ligaments. So we have ligaments covered by mucosa. So sometimes they refer to the ligamentous part as a vocal and vestibular ligament, and then they refer to the mucosal part as the vocal and vestibular fold, as the, so to speak, sheet mucosal lining, the sheet folds over the ligaments. So that's kind of what they're trying to represent there. And we'll see other pictures that give us a little bit more insight. But there you can see, you know, the mechanism of opening and closing the glottis using uh, the vocal ligaments, vestibular ligaments, vocal folds, vestibular folds.